I feel that it's a general uh, sort of spread of people here today. And I'll share with you a couple of techniques I've used in the, uh, probably there's quite a few musicians here who have to face the performance situation. And the way I do it is uh, often I, I come from a broken home and uh, I have a very low self-esteem. And I find that if I can uh, take a quiet hour or two during the day before I have to play, uh, and go into a dark room covered in plastic uh, and cover, I cover myself with baby oil and turn out all the lights and I actually uh, go into a sort of a meditative state um, and I talk to my heroes. Uh, this morning, for instance, uh, and it makes me feel good, you see. This morning I sat in the room, a special room I had made down here for me, and uh, I sat there quietly at six this morning and I imagined that I was having uh, dinner with, uh, with uh, Leo Tolstoy and T.S. Eliot and uh, W.H. Auden and also another hero of mine, uh, James Joyce. And also uh, serving the drinks was the great French poet Arthur Rambeau and in the kitchen was the, his boyfriend, poet, Paul Bear Lane. So you've got an idea of the scenario. And uh, during this dinner, they were all really nice to me. And uh, all these great figures were really nice to me. And it gives me a very warm feeling to think that people who I admire above all else, it's funny that I should admire literary figures more than musical figures, but I do. And um, except for our silly holiday, I think. Anyway, I'm sitting there and uh, Arthur Rambo spilled some of the dinner and uh, uh, Paul Bellet had a bit of a tears because they were uh, wrapped to fight, as you know. And, uh, uh, in fact, one of them shot the other at one stage, I know, as history has it. But I, I had conversations with all of them, highly intelligent conversations about their work. Uh, Tolstoy was explaining to me how his characters in, in Anna Karenina grew without his assistance. And, uh, I, I was sort of sharing my own experience in that way, how that all the characters in the novels that I sit at home and write, but don't actually write, grow. <laughs> and um, James Joyce didn't say anything. All he did was he kept putting little, they making um, little pairs of knickers out of uh, um, napkins under his fingers and dancing around the table with sort of something he, he did amused him, but he didn't really join in. T.S. Eliot, of course, looked at me and he said, I know you come from Australia, so I have to change the waistband. He said, uh, I'll probably have to say, August is the cruelest month, breeding lilacs out of the dead land, mixing memory and desire, stirring dull roots with spring rain. After he said that, I, I was shocked. Paul Verlaine came in and uh, chasing Arthur Rambeau, and Arthur Rambeau said, and my brutal witches bite their little lips which is a somewhat sort of raunchy last line from one of his poems. And uh, oh, I was so excited. And then, uh, as a matter of fact, it was a knock at the door just before I left to come to the gig, and W.B. Yates was there, old Father Yates, and he said, Had I the heavens embroidered cloths in wrought with golden and silver light, the blue and the dim and the dark cloths of night and light and the half light, I'd lay these cloths at your feet. But I, as I am poor only of my dreams, I lay my dreams at your feet. Tread softly as you tread on my dreams. But he wasn't looking at me. <laughs> they were all looking at Arthur Rambo because he's a very attractive boy. Anyway, can I get a point? 